the the way that the human mind is wired is we're trying to always figure things out. We always yes. question things. Yes. And so we need a uh, hard logistical answers. <laughs> so yes. I want to touch the topic of evolution, which is something that's taught at a very early age, uh, and especially in Western societies and pretty much maybe all over the world at this point. Yeah. Um, since like sixth to seventh to eighth grade, I was learning about evolution in, yes. in my charter school. And so with everything we see today, dinosaur bones, historical findings, yes. caves, all of these things, the way that the, the dirt builds up over time and we're able to tell how old the soil is and carbon dating, all these technologies and research and theories pop up, right? The Big Bang Theory. Yes. Is it wrong as a Christian to believe in evolution? Because before you answer, this is the way that I process it. I, I, I refuse to believe in evolution when I was a kid. Refuse, absolutely. Because yes. I have heard people talking about it. And so I automatically rejected it because of the way that my parents brought me up and what was said in the churches. So I was very close-minded. Then with all these uh, evidences being presented, I thought, you know what? Maybe, maybe, what if God actuated the process of evolution to give our human minds because he knew one day we're going to try to figure out where we came from how we came from yes. he gave us something for the non-believers to grasp onto because what happens if you don't believe in god you said it earlier you believe in something else so some people make it government some people make it theory some people make it mathematics or another person or idols yes some people make it evolution yes so what is your stance on evolution does my theory about God actuating evolution, is that something that's possible or is that just completely off? I'm wrong. Tell me to my face. I'd love to hear it. Uh, first of all, um, evolution uh, comes from someone who was a member of the round table. What, what, can you tell that uh, to everybody? Someone, without going into too much details, mm. those who know what the round table is and where it came from, they will see someone who was a non-believer in God, an atheist who was deliberately trying their hardest to brainwash people and take humanity away from the concept of this divine God who is the reason for the existence of this universe and life mm. in general. So um, that's one. Secondly, let's say everything came into existence because something exploded over 13 billion years ago. I just wonder who was present 13 billion years ago? Was it that scientist or, or his uncle or his grandpa? Mm -hmm. In the scientific field, if it's a theory, I'm not obligated to accept it and believe in it. Therefore, don't force it on me. It's a theory. So even the one who wrote it, he said, I think it's this. It's well, you think I don't have to accept it. Right. So a theory is a theory. Mm -hmm. Leave it to yourself. Don't teach it at university levels and don't brainwash all these beautiful young men and women and take them away from God. How dare you? You do this. Mm -hmm. But again, the educational system is infiltrated. So as the religious sector, so as the entertainment and so on. Now, if we assume that all this perfect and complex universe came into this because something exploded, and let me put it to you this way, my dear friend, whoever you are. And I'll say, you're my friend, because I mean it. If I say to you as an intellectual individual that the Oxford Dictionary came into this perfection and complexity because something exploded in the printing press, would you accept that? Mm. You'll say that is absurd. It's impossible. The moment you think of the Oxford Dictionary, immediately you think of a brain behind it that put it together, an intelligent being that put this dictionary together. If the Oxford Dictionary did not come into existence unless there was a brain behind it, how much more this complex universe? <laughs> so you're telling me the Oxford Dictionary cannot exist without a brain, but the universe existed without a creator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is impossible. Logically speaking, it is absolutely illogic. Yeah, right. doesn't make any sense. So let me tell you, even though I'm not a scientist, so I don't want to be one, I'm, I'm a little poor um, a believer in Jesus Christ. I walk through his grave by his grace and I ask him for his mercy. But let me say one thing about the human DNA. Just one, one thing about the human being. 
The human DNA is made out of 3.1 billion bits of information. 3.1 billion bits of information. If I were to convert that into words and write those words on an A4 sized paper, 500 words per page, it would take me 600,000 pages to write one person's DNA. You bring the entire encyclopedias of the world together, they will get nowhere near the intelligence in your DNA, my dear friend. And you're telling me, I want, you want me to believe in a big bang? <laughs> and yet, there's almost 8 billion people live on the face of this planet as we speak, but no one's fingerprint is the same as the other. Right. That's not a fluke. Right. That is a deliberate and intelligent creation by this intelligent being whom we as Christians believe and claim to be God. Genesis 1.1 In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is the cause of creation, not just an explosion on its own. And even though there was an explosion, what caused the explosion, who caused the explosion, and who controlled the expo explosion? I'm not a scientist, but let me say this as well. The scientists claim that when the explosion happened, there was an immense heat. Because anything explodes, there is, there is heat being released. So everything was heated up. So everything expanded, and when the universe cooled down, contracted. Mm -hmm. One scientist only spoke about the expansion and the contraction element, not the whole universe. He said, let's just look at this point, expansion and contraction. Who said to the universe when the explosion happened, who said, how fast should you expand or how slow and how fast or how slow you should you contract? He said, if the expansion or the contraction, he took it down to the nanosecond. He said, if that, a nanosecond, by the way, is the speed of light passing a strand of hair. That is called a nanosecond. Light travels 300 kilometers. I don't know how many miles that is. <laughs> I do it the Australian way. Please excuse me. But it travels... 300,000 kilometers a second. That's the speed of light. 300,000 kilometers a second. That's probably, I don't know, close to 200 mile, 200,000 miles a second. Imagine a speed traveling at this enormous pace, passing a strand of hair. Mm -hmm. That's called a nanosecond. Look at the perfection of God. He said if that expansion and contraction was faster a nanosecond or slower a nanosecond, life wouldn't have existed. Yeah. You're telling me all this, there was no brain controlling it? Yeah, the mathematical probability of us being here today does not it's make a, sense. It's just impossible it's without, impossible. without this enormous right. intelligent being called God. Right. Impossible. Yeah.